Hello and welcome to Pick 6 Movies, the one and only podcast on the internet where each season a theme is chosen. Then six very special movies are selected that fall within that theme. Once selected, each movie one by one is presented in its very own episode where the podcast hosts provide fascinating history behind the movie, followed by a full review, soup to nuts, to see if the film is any good, which more often than not, they aren't. Probably about now you're wondering, who are you? Well, I'm Chad Cooper, one of the aforementioned hosts of Pick 6 Movies. The other host is Mr. Bo Ransdell, one of my dearest lifelong friends, who has a talent for selecting movies that defy rational understanding of how or why they were ever made. Case in point, the film featured in the finale of this season's theme, Comic Sans Quality, where we are examining half a dozen movies inspired by comic books. Most of the movies featured in this season are pretty forgettable, but not the finale of season 17. (laughs) Oh, no sir. Episode 6 of this season is Faust, Love of the Damned. A movie so memorable that when I close my eyes, I can still see some of the images from this dumpster fire of failed entertainment. It's the kind of memory that calls for one of those eternal sunshine of the spotless mind type clinics, or maybe one of them men in black flash sticks. Or hell, just give me a rubber mallet and I'll smack myself in the head to see if it creates any intermittent memory loss, and I'll just hope that this movie finds its way into the shadows of my consciousness. It's so very, very bad. And there's just one man who can introduce us to this film like none other, the man who chose this movie to be the season finale. Mr. Bo Ransdell, please get in here and unfortunately introduce these people to this terrible, 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 terrible movie. Buckle in, folks. Things are going to get weird this time around. While we have on Pick 6 Movies covered some of the more famous comics in their journey to the big screen, we have rarely dipped our toes into the world of independent comics. And that is all about to change. The birth of what we know as the independent comic scene came in the 60s and 1970s. Though you could argue that it began in the 20s and 30s, when illustrators would sell pornographic illustrated books using mainstream comics characters. If you want to see Popeye really going to town on olive oil, you could, thanks to artists who filled a hole in the market by depicting famous comic characters filling holes of their own. These were also called Tijuana Bibles, and they were the ancestors of the independent comic scene of the following decades. The more recognizable version of indie comics reared its collective head in the 1960s, This was the Silver Age of comics, where big publishers like DC and Marvel were forced to revamp the entire philosophy of comics at the time. Stan Lee, Steve Ditko, and Jack Kirby invented a swath of characters that fit the superhero mold, but were more complicated than the two-dimensional roster of the 40s, like Superman and Wonder Woman. This was the rise of the Justice League, of the uncanny X-Men, and the Fantastic Four. But outside the big publishing houses, artists were swept up by the changing culture, fueled by the feeling that something fundamental was shifting in the fabric of the United States. These artists weren't interested in writing for kids. They wanted to reflect the times they lived in, which meant sex, drugs, and rock and roll. As more of these artists popped up, it became clear this was a real movement, and writers and artists adopted the moniker Comics with an X, to let readers know that the work inside the covers would be considered pornographic by the Comics Code, an institution you heard us talk about on this show in relation to the horror comics of the 1950s. Inspired by EC Comics of yesteryear and the more acceptable but still counterculture Mad Magazine from Harvey Kurtzman, artists like R. Crumb, Gilbert Shelton, and Kim Deitch sold their wares in head shops and record stores. Wherever the hippies and weirdos were buying, underground comics were likely there. And like the hippies of yore, a lot of these artists were called to San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district, where alternate sexualities, hallucinogenic drugs, and rock music filled the streets and suggested a freedom 
the American culture rarely tolerated. While creators were publishing their own comics and zines or collected comic strips together in booklet form with titles like The Adventures of Jesus, Wonder Warthog, God Knows, and Lenny of Laredo, it was R. Crumb who found the first substantial financial success with Zap Comics in 1968. And before the end of the 1960s, museums would be collecting the work of these artists, recognizing that something was happening in the comic medium that was more mature and was, in fact, art. While the boys were making their sex-fueled comics, the ladies were breaking ground too. Artists like Linda Berry, Lynn Sheevil, and Joyce Farmer, the latter having published the all-female anthology Tits and Clits comics in 1972. The movement gained new attention when Ralph Bakshi animated R. Crumb's Fritz the Cat in X-rated movie form, and Terry Gilliam, who would do animated sequences for Monty Python's Flying Circus, was forged in this crucible of underground comics and took his subversive views of this medium to the airwaves. Even creatives, even creators from Marvel and DC looked for an outlet for more mature concepts, resulting in books like Mr. A from Steve Ditko, which was full-blown Ayn Rand fan fiction, and Apple Comics, a collection of less-than-mainstream work from other artists in the Marvel family. But all good things must come to an end, and the wave of weird comics with an X was running into some problems. First, lots of places were changing laws to get rid of head shops and pass some First Amendment restrictions that banned the sale of pornography. Given the often graphic depictions of sex in these underground comics, they were included along with the magazines with all the pictures of ladies peeing on each other. Between these laws and some of the big publishers scooping up the talent and the distribution channels drying up so that some magazines could only be found by mail order, the market was dying. Interestingly, Howard the Duck was a response to the success of underground comics and its skewering of social issues. And once more, we come full circle on Pick 6 Movies. Beginning in the 1980s, underground comics were largely a thing of the past. That is, until the rise of specialty comics stores. As mainstream comics became collector's items, stores specializing in new and used books popped up all over the place. Shout out to Rick's Comics here in Clarksville, Tennessee, still doing it after all these years. God bless them. With lots of shelf space and a diverse clientele, the independent comic could live again and find a new generation of readers. With the 1960s and Cultural Revolution a distant memory, this new crop of independent alternative comics were more about creator freedom. As the big publishers grew in power and reach, the artists were discovering that their creations were owned by their corporate bosses and not the people who, you know, created the thing. A few breakthrough hits from self-publishers made it into the popular consciousness, books that weren't just the animated strippers of R. Crumb. Art Spiegelman made a splash with Mouse, spelled M-A-U-S, which examined the Holocaust through anthropomorphized mice. Wendy and Richard Peeney created ElfQuest, a massively popular fantasy series, and Dave Sim hit it big with Cerberus the Aardvark. And then there were the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Published by the small publisher Mirage Studios, the series created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird became a massive hit. It was eventually adapted into a more kid-friendly cartoon, and the movies drew more from these than the grittier comics. There was Jeff Smith's Bone and Sergio Aragonese's Gru the Wanderer, and the emo vengeance tale The Crow, a comic by James O'Barr, before it was a movie with Brandon Lee. You can go on and on. Love and Rockets, Ghost World, Yojimbo, comics that were more complex or daring than anything being done at the big houses, and audiences loved it. And that brings us to Faust. Playwright David Quinn joined forces with artist Tim Vigil to release the first edition of Faust, subtitled Love of the Damned, in 1987. Along with the complicated heroes of Alan Moore's Watchmen and Frank Miller's Batman in The Dark Knight Returns, Faust featured the anti-hero, John Jaspers, and a ton of graphic violence. The first issue was released by the self-owned Rebel Studios through a handful of other publishers, and it was a big hit, one of the biggest in the independent scene. The first issue sold north of 100,000 copies. While subsequent issues would sell about half as many, that's still really good numbers for an indie comic. 
Faust was plagued by a highly irregular release schedule that sometimes left the readers waiting months and years for the next installment. It was during one of these extended breaks that David Quinn wrote a screenplay for the book based on the first volume titled, unsurprisingly, Faust, Love of the Damned. Now, before we turn our attention to the movie that resulted from that screenplay and thus began the downfall of Western civilization, worth noting that Faust finally wrapped up its run with issues 14 and 15, which concluded about 25 years after the first issue. Just this past July, Sony Pictures announced they were developing a new version as an animated series, so it's true when they say that the horror never really ends. But I don't care about television, Bo, you say. Shut up about the boob tube and get to the movie. Calm down, nameless listener, we're getting there. But first, a quick detour into the world of indie horror. We're not going to have too much opportunity to talk about Stuart Gordon on this show, on account of him mostly making good movies, or certainly interesting movies. And that's no accident. Gordon was a maverick, having come up in the theater with an avant-garde spirit. One of his first big splashes in theater was a school production he put together in college called The Game Show, in which the audience was locked inside an auditorium while plants in the audience were abused, humiliated, and raped. Not really, of course, but the point was to shock the audience out of their seats, to demand that the show be stopped. It was, according to Stuart Gordon, a manifesto against apathy in the face of art. Now, whether you think that's too extreme or not, it was creative, it was different. Even after he found success in film, Gordon would continually return to the stage where he felt his greatest freedom to be provocative. As Gordon found his way into film, he was accompanied by a pal by the name of Brian Yuzna. Yuzna was born in the Philippines, in Manila, to American parents. His family bounced around to Nicaragua and Puerto Rico and Panama before finally landing in Atlanta, Georgia in the 1960s. As Brian grew up, he became infatuated with horror and genre fiction, especially that of H.P. Lovecraft. During the 1970s, Yuzna hooked up with a commune, worked odd jobs to pay his way, but he never found his niche. That is, until he met Stuart Gordon. Gordon wanted to make a Frankenstein film, and was turned on to Lovecraft's short story, Herbert West Reanimator. That story is vaguely Frankenstein-like, and Gordon took to it, eventually updating the setting for budgetary reasons, and then shaping it for the stage, and then when that didn't work, he tried television, and then when that didn't work, finally a movie. It was here that he was introduced to Brian Yuzna, who was trying his hand at film production. Gordon and Yuzna bonded over their love of H.P. Lovecraft and his eldritch horrors, and Yuzna envisioned a movie with the wild spirit of the evil dead and the effects of the howling. And so the now infamous horror film Reanimator was born. If you haven't seen Reanimator, it is a true delight. It's gory, it's overtly sexual, and it's incredibly funny, largely thanks to a terrific performance from Jeffrey Combs as Herbert West. And not only was it audacious and bloody, it was critically well-received. Pick Six Movies and non-reanimated film critic Roger Ebert said after seeing it, quote, I walked out somewhat surprised and reinvigorated, if not reanimated, by a movie that had the audience emitting taxi whistles and wild goat cries. I think that's a positive review. Anyway, Rotten Tomatoes has Reanimator sitting around 93% fresh, and this is for a movie where a severed head goes down on a co-ed. That last sentence is true, and just one of the reasons you should see Reanimator. Anyway, the movie was a hit, and the filmmaking team of Brian Yuzna and Stuart Gordon was off to the races. They followed Reanimator with From Beyond, another Lovecraft adaptation, and almost equally bonkers and quite a lot of fun in its own right. Yuzna co-wrote that one, and then produced the movie Dolls, which Gordon also directed. Here's the shocker, folks. Along with Stuart Gordon, the guy who co-wrote a movie where a pineal gland emerges like a penis from Jeffrey Combs' forehead, also wrote Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which he also executive produced. And then there was his first effort as a director, the body horror cult classic Society, in which the hoi polloi of Beverly Hills are actually monsters who melt into a puddle and feed on the lower classes. Yuzna wrote and directed more, almost exclusively mid-range to low-budget horror films, 
including both of the dentist movies with Corbin Burnson, Bride of Reanimator, Silent Night, Deadly Night 4, and Return of the Living Dead 3, while also setting up his own production called Filmax, built to make modestly budgeted horror movies from artists all over the world. An enviable goal, until you realize that led to his production of Faust's Love of the Damned. Our movie in question was made in Spain, while using English language actors or actors with dubbed English voices, a mix that always works. When the movie was ultimately released or escaped, reviews were oddly mixed, in that some critics suggested by checking your brain at the door you might mind some enjoyment from the over-the-top gore and gratuitous sexuality, while a more accurate review called it, quote, low-budget horror slop with lots of TNA. End quote. While that sounds awful as a viewing experience, and it is, it sounds pretty good to me for an episode of Pick 6 Movies. Stuart Gordon has sadly passed away at the age of 72, just last year as a matter of fact. Before he passed, he did a stage production with Jeffrey Combs as Edgar Allan Poe, and created a musical version of Reanimator that was very well received, and that's besides several truly interesting films like Stuck with Stephen Ray and the neo-noir King of the Ants. Brian Yesna has been retired since about 2010, and I honestly wish the guy the best, despite the fact that he made this movie. While Stuart Gordon was clearly the real artist in their collaboration, there is no doubt Yesna loves horror movies, and given the time of year in which we're recording this, that's almost enough for me. But enough backstory, how bad is this movie really? Spoilers, it's terrible. So, ladies and gentlemen, M's and Fausts, it's time to check your brain at the door and get Chad in here for this grisly superhero flop, 2000's Faust, Love of the Damned. Boy. Welcome back to Pick 6 Movies. This is the ass end of Season 17. (laughs) I am Bo Ransdell. With me as always, the Claire to my M, Chad Cooper. I just feel dirty. I feel gross, Bo, having watched this movie twice. Uh I can't get rid of it. It is the skeeviest I've ever felt. Of all of the 100 plus movies we've watched, this is the one that made me feel bad as a human being. And we watched Fifty Shades of Grey. I would watch Fifty Shades of Grey six times in a row before ever watching this again. Yeah, well, because Fifty Shades of Grey is about 320% less sleazy. This is the worst made movie we've ever discussed. Mm. Yeah, budget, acting, writing, it is a real step below the majority of everything. And I'm including Grizzly and Kingdom of the Spiders and a bunch of other stuff that you picked out. This is really... (laughs) This is worse than all of that from a production level. It's House of the Dead quality, but make it sleazier. I felt bad for the people who made this movie. The people in it, anyone who watched it, if you've never seen this movie, don't. You should never watch it. It is a waste of your precious time on Earth that you could be spending with friends and family or just sitting alone in quiet reflection of who you are as a person. No, I can't deny any of that. I'm not sure I feel comfortable cracking jokes on this movie because it feels like you're punching down it's like hacking on a local theater production of cats that decided to set the musical in an old west version of the year 3000 like what are you doing here this is a fucking shit show people from one of the creators of honey i shrunk the kids comes (laughs) honey i shrunk my soul you know a broken clock is right twice a day and somehow that guy got that movie right he got all of this wrong I think his name ended up on that script because Stuart Gordon, like, owed him a favor or something. (laughs) They're going to take my thumbs, Tommy. They're going to take my thumbs! It's terrible. Brian Yesda makes a lot of bad movies. This is maybe the worst of them. I saw this movie years ago. Where? 
I it was some cable channel or another. All right. Like I didn't go out of my way or nothing, but it happened to me and it entered my eyeballs and I've carried it with me ever since because it is sort of a stain on your soul. I put this in the same category that I put blood sucking freaks. It's so yeah. ultra violent and misogynistic and shocking for the sake of being shocking, but it's not entertaining. Hell, it looks like most of that Christian themed entertainment of all due respect to Christians who make Christian themed entertainment that's unbearable to watch for so many reasons. This is, as it turns out, like a satanic version of Willie Ames's Bible Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, a pretty good comparison. I, imagine that level of production quality only with a lot more new metal and titties and yeah. rape and murder and incest let's not leave out the incest like i left it out on purpose bo fair warning to <laughs> anyone listening to this episode there is going to be discussion of incest because that's in this movie when you proposed this movie i didn't even know what it was and then i found that it was nowhere to be found no streaming service had it probably because of pending litigation you can't <laughs> buy it you can't purchase it from any respectable retailer yeah this is a thing you got to buy at a convention from a dude that is going to ask you to step behind the curtain i was going to ask you to go to your guy who knows a guy to, to give me some link to download it and then lo and behold it's on youtube thanks a lot internet i appreciate that one i like the fact that this entire movie has no like takedown notice or anything because they're just like <laughs> it ain't worth it if you're dumb enough to watch it well <laughs> that's on you shithead <laughs> right we're not making any money off of this thing because every time we try to <laughs> pawn it off on somebody they threaten to sue us or take yeah. us to jail spoilers real quick bo when we rank our six movies at the end of this episode this is my bottom oh, this is the certainly. it's the worst thing we watched this season and that includes howard the duck a movie that included full frontal feathered naked human breasts on a duck that movie is better than this yeah this is <laughs> arguably the worst movie we will ever do for this show i knew that going into it i was wide-eyed about it but it was also one of those things that i felt or i hoped maybe that's a better way to put it i hope chad this would be an exorcism of sorts and that i could just stop ever thinking about the fact that this movie existed it is awful and we're going to get into all the awful details but i honestly believe that the people behind this movie thought that they were making a good ish film in fact i thought about the production crew and the writers and actors and directors and all that. like they seemed like the people that steve martin was lampooning in the movie bowfinger a very underrated movie unlike this movie which cannot be underrated enough <laughs> yeah no matter what you compare it against it's probably worse <laughs> the only thing i can think of that's worse than this is a german poo video but you're you're in a completely different neighborhood with german poo movies so i've heard yeah so we've heard um <laughs> hey, hey, hey you got turd i'll take a look at it <laughs> <laughs> the shite is good. first of all let me just say i like the fact that the youtube copy of this opens with like hey best special effects at sitgus it's like oh okay i i guess somebody pointed out in uh one of the facebook groups or something like i'm about to sit down and watch the award-winning uh faust love of the damned which is true and impossible all at the same time it was the only one up for contention there's no way anything else competed for this it's like how harry anderson got his job as a judge on night court he was the only one who answered the phone <laughs> we open on a quote that goes the desires we deny find us as fate which is just the kind of nonsense to set the tone that none it, of this is going to make any sense but it's going to be a lot of dialogue that seems important but never is it's not a quote from faust it's just a bunch of nonsense that the bozos who wrote this movie put up front to make it sound deep and profound it sounds like something you'd read in some goth girls book of self-published poetry just to set the stage this movie is chock-a-block full of just edgelord dialogue it's written by people who are listening to nothing but the worst of heavy metal music <laughs> <laughs> and you know it's just got an incel vibe to it 
where you know <laughs> that they're just like, oh, you fucking bitches, man. It's just the worst people in the world. The people that n- should never, whose ideas should never be put on paper, much less celluloid. I agree with that. Our opening quote is signed M, which is Mephistopheles, or, or maybe Moriarty from League of <laughs> Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, look who's back. We cut to our movie's hero. His name is Jaspers. That's the name of our hero, Jasp John Jaspers. His first name is John, which I guess that's somewhat in line with the source material character. You know, Johan. Eh, Steve Martin did it better to bring him up again. A genius among mortal men. He had the decency to call his title character in Roxanne CD when retelling the story of Cyrano de Bergerac. That was clever. That was fun. This movie has none of that. Steve Martin has never heard of this movie, and rightfully so. Like, he would be a worse person. And I'm a <laughs> worst person for having seen it you're a worst person for having seen it we all are you know bo i like your shoes but as much as i like your shoes i wouldn't want to be in your shoes i just like to remind you of better movies every now and again please do that periodically in fact <laughs> if you just want to throw out a random line from roxanne about every 15 minutes totally understandable <laughs> And so, yeah, so this John Jasper's asshole wakes up to discover that the crow has happened in his bedroom. He's an artist, Bo. He's a painter. Like, not the kind that paints houses and makes money. He's the one that, you know, interprets shit, so he's broke. He wakes up to find that his wife is upside down. Is it his wife or his girlfriend? Eh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Whoever he's in love with. And she's dead. So he immediately goes to a bridge and starts tossing some shit in the water that I think maybe is hers, but... I don't know. That seems like a real guilty thing to do. If I come to and my wife is dead hanging upside down from an easel, like, well, I guess I should cut her down and then go commit suicide. That'll make everything seem legit. (laughs) This is in no way suspicious. I mean, how could this possibly be what the police refer to as evidence? And then for no good reason, Chad, as he's throwing this shit in the water, then the credits just start. Uh Uh-huh. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So what's going on now? (laughs) Um, other than this awful new metal that's blasting at my face. (laughs) Yeah, and the credits are kind of coming at you, but they look real crappy to let you know what you're in for. Uh Uh-huh. Here's the one thing I like about the credits, Chad, is that (laughs) the guy who did the special effects is a dude who goes by the moniker Screaming Mad George. And now, do I think the effects work is good in this movie? I do not. Do I like the fact that there's someone on the planet who goes by the name Screaming Mad George? That I do, Chad. That I do. A movie we may get around to reviewing is a film called Getting Lucky. (laughs) Yeah. About this guy who finds a leprechaun in a beer bottle. And at the end of that movie, if you watch the credits, which you and I as younger men did, Uh we were different back then, Bo. (laughs) Yeah, we've changed so much. (laughs) <laughs> in those in credits the spiritual advisor on that movie was someone named guru ramakor cob up your butt uh-huh which i submit as the greatest <laughs> credit in a movie ever is that on imdb you think I'll look that up. Never. Yeah, it's probably in like wacky credits or something, you know? <laughs> it's that screaming George Fontiliitis or whatever the hell this guy's name is. All right. Yeah. Back to this crappy movie. We cut to a movie version of a mental hospital. There are padded walls. It's a real loony bin. And inside- A giggle factory, yes. <laughs> and then inside the padded cell is some guy. Spoilers, it's Jaspers. You wouldn't know that because we just had a bunch of opening credits and we never saw Jaspers up close close enough to realize oh the guy in this nut house is the guy who cut down his wife and almost went to kill himself or maybe he did we're not sure and looking through the door at him is our chubby dr yamoto Uh uh-huh and jeffrey combs who is an actor i dearly love in a movie that i dearly hate but jeffrey combs is the the detective margulies is his name okay and he's like so, this guy's not saying much at all, is he, Patty? And you might have was like, no, no, he hasn't said a word since he got here. He's like, yeah, yeah, he killed 19 people. You uh, got some way you can, you know, jumpstart him or something? <laughs> Which, 
is a real line in the movie. And you're like, what? How do you think the brain works? So we immediately get a flashback before Jasper's ended up in the nut house. So we went from a crime scene in his art studio to Suicide Falls to the Wackadoo Bounce House. Then we're flashing back to this crime scene earlier in the movie. That's right. right? Uh-huh. All right. So Margulies, our detective, he shows up at this mansion looking building. We're going to later find out it's an embassy. That happens accidentally when somebody just drops that word. And outside there's a real media circus of news crews and Margulies, he walks up to this beat cop and he's like, hey there, Flatfoot, what's going on inside? A crime, I'm guessing. And the beat cop says, uh, yeah, we got uh, specific orders from the commissioner, Mustache to wait here till he arrives from the opera in his fitted tuxedo. I think they're doing a production of Faust. Wink, wink. And then there is this loud scream from inside the embassy mansion and red ooze starts pouring out from the two main doors, which I thought the blob was going to show up for a moment. Oh, if only. Margulies says, hey there, boyo, that red ooze pouring out from under the doors, that can only mean one thing. Vigo the Carpathian has escaped from his painting again, and I don't see any Ghostbusters 2 around here to take care of business. I'm going to head inside. Don't get angry. The ooze doesn't like it when you're angry. You know, they're <laughs> called the Ghostbusters and they're in control, Chad. They're all wait- like all the other cops are waiting for that Marino dude to show up, Commissioner Marino. And there's also some news reporting going on in the background where they're like, this this could be a terrorist attack and you're like all right whatever so there's a scream inside that's where margulies is just like i don't care how much ooze is on the ground i'm gonna get to the bottom of this and he goes inside to find people just mutilated and scattered around all dead and whatnot Bo, i've never seen this many dismembered mannequin parts in my life <laughs> it's really sad it's like the killing fields for mannequins you combine that with all of the corn syrup and the red dye mixed together, splattered about, it, it, it's truly unbelievable. And I mean that, literally. None of this is believable. That it was a movie? Uh, <laughs> that somebody was like, you know what? This looks great. <laughs> this was my vision for this scene. The commissioner, he shows up and he's like, what's going on here? Who, who let that guy inside? What's happening? We're going to step on the chair. <laughs> Dude, they tell him the hound dog has gone inside, which is a, a phrase that I don't think is repeated again. But I love the fact that they have this nickname for Jeffrey Combs in this movie. He doesn't look like a hound dog. He likes Elvis. I guess he's definitely not a good detective. Maybe he won like a hot dog eating contest. He has a puppy. That's really <laughs> it. We follow Margulies inside after Marino shows up outside and they're like, well, yeah, yeah, he went inside and ignored your orders to stay out here and let a massacre go through. I like the way Margulies carries his weapon in a way that clearly reflects that this actor has never held a gun, real or pretend, in his life. Nor has he seen another person hold a gun on TV or in a movie. It's really refreshing to see him hold it the same way, I don't know, someone would hold an iguana. No one is ever going to accuse Jeffrey Combs of doing things the way that every other actor has. You know, look to the Frighteners yeah. for that. <laughs> or the way a human being would. <laughs> or any movie he was in, quite frankly. I love him. I love him so much. He is whipping around this place, holding the gun kind of aloft, but not necessarily pointed at anything. It's like watching a child run around your neighborhood with a Nerf gun. Me playing laser tag is about as... Uh, <laughs> Margulies makes his way upstairs at this embassy and he finds more mannequin parts and there's a couple of movie extras pretending to be dead laying around on a dinner table. And then from the shadows jumps some guy with two long wolverine blades on each hand and this stranger's covered in corn syrup and red dye. I have no idea who this guy is, Bo. Spoilers, it's Jaspers. But then again, we've not seen this character enough in close-up to identify this blood-splattered person as the suicidal straight jacket crazy person from earlier in our movie he's also i believe naked he's not naked here although he's naked in about 43 percent <laughs> of this movie he's wearing okay. a white shirt with blood splatters on it but just give it time and he'll be nude very shortly fair enough i i got confused because he's so often naked he's naked more than he's not and i know the math on that doesn't add up with the percentages i just read that what i was quoting was fully naked he's naked from the waist down sometimes he has this weird red cowl but he's naked a lot there's a lot of naked people i'm naked now well at least we're even chad 
because <laughs> at no point in any of the recordings of Pick Six movies have I worn a stitch of clothing. I know, know that. That's why we don't broadcast this stuff live because we don't get arrested. I record it for myself. <laughs> Watch it later. Margulies, our detective, approaches him and thinks that this guy's about to die. Uh huh. But then he just kind of stops and goes catatonic on us. Our John, John Jasper's character. He attacks him at first. Yeah. And then a, a mystery woman who's wearing a veil over her face, she's in the shadows and she distracts Jasper's for a moment. Margulies awkwardly points his gun at Jasper's, who retracts his. Uh, assassin's creed double blades in his forearms and then that's when he goes into this catatonic state and bo it's here that we really get the first close-up of this actor having cross eyes and i don't know if it's an acting choice or just an unfortunate characteristic I think it's the latter and not the former, because this dude has a cockeye the same way Tiny Lister, the guy who played Zeus in No Holds Bar starring Hulk Hogan, had a cockeye. He perpetually looks like he should have cartoon Tweety Birds flying around his head as a sign of disorientation. This is maybe the worst performance in the worst movie we've ever covered because his idea of going catatonic as you pointed out is just to stare wide-eyed and cross-eyed into the near distance while other people are like what what's wrong with him he's catatonic uh all right <laughs> and he goes catatonic all throughout the film the cops bust in followed by the commissioner who says what the hell do you think's going on Margaret? i'm in charge here jesus look at all these dead people they're no survivors and Mar Margulies says, hey, boy, what about the woman, the Arab woman? And you're like, whoa, 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 the Arab woman. Hey, don't worry. It's going to get a lot more gross. We saw a woman earlier whose face was covered and her head was covered, but I cannot say whether or not she was Arab. Ray Stevens had a song called Ahab the Arab, which was a racially insensitive ditty about a guy who has sex with a married woman. If you're suggesting that Ray Stevens may be racially insensitive, pardon me while I pick my jaw up off the floor. The sensitive guy behind the, the song The Streak didn't have uh, the, the foresight to be like, maybe I shouldn't, you know, paint an entire uh, culture. And part of the wor world's geography with the same brush, but uh, you know, he had Guitar Zan mm -hmm. and that uh, that other song about a squirrel terrorizing a church of Baptists. That's probably his finest work. That's what got him into heaven. Is he dead yet? No, he he's got a theater in Nashville, Tennessee, Chad, uh -huh. where they wheel his skeletal remains out on stage to do everything is minutes beautiful. on the night show. Yeah, exactly. He thinks <laughs> everything is beautiful while a bunch of old people eat some sloppy mashed potatoes and roast beef how do we know this many ray steven songs what's wrong with us in my defense shed you were the one naming most of them so you know <laughs> well, in my defense you were listening all right it takes two people for a ray stevens joke to work one to say it and one to listen that, that's just math when marino hey why, why, why did you come in here margalee says hey i thought i could sing some lives but you know and then as he's saying this we get this shot of this dude's lower half rolling away from his upper half on a dinner table yeah it just falls off yeah. the commissioner does shout at him you bungled this whole murder scene i'm not sure how but the death of all these people is somehow your fault the guy you refused to kill he's gonna get off on an insanity plea you should have wasted him and like uh, a lot of that is actual dialogue from this movie which is delivered quite badly every performance in this movie feels like an afternoon soap opera or vintage 80s era porno but the people are all fully clothed well for now sure <laughs> then rapid fire edits da, 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 da. we cut back to the booby hatch yeah flash forward back to the cuckoo hospital where our our detective margulies uh -huh. runs into our uh, psychiatrist character named Jade. Jade DeCamp yeah. is her name. Uh-huh. And he's asking uh, Yamoto, like, hey, Pally, can you get this guy fit to stand trial? And as they're walking down the hall doing a 
you know, patented West Wing walk and talk. He does call him Yamamoto. And then Dr. <laughs> Yamoto says, uh, no, nah, man, it's Yamoto, not Yamamoto. Margulies says, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's like, hey, that's a real nice character defining microaggression. <laughs> sure, everybody likes roller skates. <laughs> my, my name's Brad. I'm going to call you Brian. Very what? much. That, yeah. That's not my name. Sure it is. Well, it's what I can remember. How about that? And so he literally runs into Dr. Jade, who drops some cassettes. We should also say she's a lovely woman from the late 90s with lots of bangs. And she's got a little boombox with her and some CDs and some cassettes. Uh, they all crash to the ground. Oh, sorry about that. Let me bend down. Ooh, look at that skirt. Nice and short. I always get real nervous around pretty women. I mean, uh, doctors like you. And Dr. Jade, she clutches the top of her blouse, which is buttoned all the way up to her clavicle. And she just squeezes it around so that he can't see the base of her neck. Yeah. And you're like, oh, okay, she's real conservative. She's uptight. And because this is, you know, the movie is really only beginning and it hasn't really begun to flex its muscles of how it's going to insult women with stereotypes and misogyny and insulting portrayals of all genders that are not straight white men. We're really just starting to warm things up. Bo. After he creepily flirts with her for a minute, he's like, so I've been thinking, I don't think this Jesper's fellow worked alone. How about you help me there? Maybe afterwards we can get some coffee and talk about what you found. I don't know who you are, or what you do. I don't know if you work here or if you're just visiting someone, but I do music therapy with all of the crazies in this facility. I play popular, timeless music to make them not so bananas in the head. Blind Melon, Goo Goo Dolls, Jane's Addiction, they love been caught stealing when the dogs bark. These nut jobs just come unglued. That's what I do. I'm a doctor. You got any wallflowers? Sure you do. Everybody likes the wallflowers. And she very politely is like, I don't think I'm going to go in. Anywhere with you. Oh, whoa, whoa. Before you go, uh, why don't you take my business card? It's got my phone number on it. You know, if, if any of these wackadoos, especially that one over there in the bounce house, if he starts talking, give me a call. Maybe you could come over. We could listen to a little ace of bass at my place, if you know what I mean. By the way, if you ever decide to get rid of those shoes, mail them to me and I'll send you 20 bucks. That's really unsettling. Okay, bye-bye. Just wait, sweetheart. It's gonna get a lot worse. And so she goes to his cell. Jasper cell yes and uh -huh. jasper's sees the shadow of the faust monster or whatever uh, well with one of his eyes he does on the other eye he's looking out the window like a lizard watching friends and then <laughs> <laughs> he kind of makes a frowny face <laughs> <laughs> it's just the worst. And Margulies, it turns out, has doubled back to watch through the door while Dr. Jade is like, hey, how about I let you out of this straitjacket, accused killer of 19? Do you like Dave Matthews or the Counting Crows? You like Blind Melon? I'm here to help you. I want you to feel more comfortable, Jaspers, okay? Let me just take off the straitjacket, all right? I know this feels like we're in bad 80s porn, but it's not going to go that direction. Just you know what? Just listen to the music. Feel the music. That's right. All I can say is that my life is pretty plain. Do you like watching puddles gather in the rain, Jaspers? And he's just twitchy and weird where he's just like, ah, ah, ah. I mean, he's like Bill the Cat from <laughs> Bloom County or something. And outside watching, Marino shows up to join Margulies to stare. The commissioner. So, Margulies, it turns out there was no woman at the crime scene. Also, all of your obsession with this secretive satanic cult, The Hand, is all a bunch of bullshit. Hey, listen up here, boy Oh, First off, I don't know what you're talking about, but I totally know everything you're talking about. This is all new weird shit that you're introducing into the movie that the audience is completely unaware of. Hopefully they'll pick it up later. Look, the whole scene was just chaos, like a pimple on the face of God. That actually is said, and that's the point where you're like, oh, so none of this is going to be well written. Mm -mm. Got it. And also, this case isn't yours anymore. The feds are on it, so back off. And then Margulies looks back into the holding room, and he sees Jasper's raise up his hand, and there's a pentagram scar on his left palm, which that seems like something they might have noticed during the original processing of a murder suspect. And it's not a small scar. It looks like Tot's burnt hand from 
from Raiders of the Lost Ark. It gives them a, like a Hail Marino there. <laughs> and that turns into some bad graphics, Chad. Uh-huh. And then we cut to the House of M. Yeah, it's this mystery mansion. Yeah, and there's like a Cthulhu statue in the lobby. We see the mystery lady from earlier, the one who was wearing the veil. Her name is Claire. And she walks over to this old man who from the back looks like he might be mistaken for joe biden or a present day ted danson based on this haircut but it turns out this character is m or mephistopheles i just refer to him as the devil yeah is he the devil you said or is he work for the devil technically he's working for the devil i believe everybody's working for the devil everybody needs an antichrist and she tells him, you're not going to believe this, but Jasper's stopped killing by choice. Oh my God, Claire Bear. He's what? That's right. He's not killing anymore, but he has to kill. That's what we do. It's what he does. He has to do whatever we tell him. And he asked me to give you a message, him. He said, no, that was his whole message. Jasper's, I think is his name. He's the one with the Forrest Whitaker eyes. He's still alive. <laughs> but, um, Mr. Devil, how about I just disrobe? I'll give you a hand job. Oh, oh and my. I'll describe how he almost killed a police officer. What do you think about that? And then that's what happens. She just starts jerking this guy off. And the devil is like, oh, Claire Bear. Oh, you got quite a grip. Easy. You're not shucking corn, honey. Look, I, I don't mean to complain, but how about you trim those nails? Put a little lotion on there not because i like lotion but your hands really dry anyway so whoo jasper's easy didn't kill every oh body at the embassy oh uh that's fine where's whoa jasper's now boy mm, huh, i'm getting hungry maybe if jasper's is coming back this way you could call him and have him pick up some popeye's fried chicken if he's on his way back to the oh to the to the to the devil mansion we're in Woo, you got a touch there claire bear Ooh. and so we leave this filth uh to go back to the giggle factory yep where dr yamato is telling dr j that she's off the case for out for yeah. no good reason he's just like i we're gonna transfer him tonight so you're you're out of here she talks to an intake nurse and, so where are you taking that handsome fella in the straight jacket who's not wearing it anymore because i let him out i did that that was me but anyway and the nurse is like he's not going anywhere i'm gonna get some coffee you're like oh something's up yeah. dr yamoto was lying to dr jade i'm gonna go get some coffee don't snoop through any files and then <laughs> yeah she takes off and then because this movie doesn't rest in a scene for more than about 37 seconds or they flash forward or flash back or flash sideways as needed yeah this time we're flashing sideways to our detective margulies uh -huh. who is googling the hand cult and somehow uh -huh. not getting results from teenage mutant ninja turtles he's using alta vista and also there's an image for the search button that didn't load when they filmed this so there's a big red x on it this whole thing is just a geo cities page about <laughs> satanic cults i like that once he pulls up the results there's a web page that all of the text is written in your favorite font Bo. papyrus it looks like <laughs> shit there's a spinning circa 1990 pentagram uh-huh then at the very bottom there's one of those gifs of a construction worker and it says you know coming soon under normal circumstances i would pause the movie and read all of the bullshit on this website i didn't do none of that here i was like just move along we're really really swimming in the sewers on this one and it was not worth my time basically it just says what happens at the end of the movie which is like oh they're gonna raise a homunculus and that's gonna bring about the end of the world <laughs> but then we flash sideways yet again chad right <laughs> To go back to the funny town where John Jaspers is drawing a pentagram in blood on the wall. Dude, his illustrations on the wall, they look like kindergartner finger paintings. It's the same level of artistry as a horse with a paintbrush in its mouth. I was going to say the little girl from Amityville Horror when she drew Jody, the pig yeah. monster. Yeah, yeah. It's that. Dr. Jade comes in and she hands him a Sharpie so that all of his childlike scribblings are easier to produce on the walls. And then Jasper, through his The Hills Have Eyes eyes, he's able to identify some death metal CD in her collection and she puts it in the CD player and then Jasper's just goes bonkers. He smashes the CD player and then he comes to and he's like, my name is Jasper's and I remember everything. And so let's flash back 
back. Sure, why not? And it's <laughs> him and his wife, and he is like staring at some painting that he did or whatever. He's just like, they're all naked paintings of her, yeah. and her name is Blue. I just don't know if I'm successfully capturing the importance of your beauty or whatever the fuck blue let me ask you a question have you ever believed in anything because i used to believe in art but it's all form and no substance again i think our screenwriter was plagiarizing a teenager that spent way too much time listening to the cure and reading sylvia plath and then in (laughs) comes a guy named Baez, who is uh, a gangster and his crew. You got their names? Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm thorough. Is he the fat one in the hat? He is. And so the whole gig here is that Baez is some gangster who paid to have Blue brought into the country illegally. But they all work for the devil, right? Or are they just hired goons? Because later on they're working for the devil. I think this is a separate group of hired goons. No, nah, because you got the bald guy. He shows up later. And then the dude with the, the white guy with the afro who looks like the dude Peter Vinkman was electrocuting at the beginning of Ghostbusters 1. He's there. Oh, okay. All right. Fair enough. I missed it. You know what? It's the same actors. Okay. (laughs) That doesn't mean anything in this movie, Chad. They could be playing two different characters. Charles, congratulations. You got the part of Hired Goon 1, Hired Goon 7, and Hired Goon 9. Congratulations. I am sending my agent a bottle of champagne. (laughs) That's three checks, right? Oh, yes. It's three checks. Yes. The fat guy leader. He goes over and he tells Blue that she has not paid the fee that was owed to somebody for smuggling her into wherever we are because i don't know what country this movie takes place in and then he goes full chinatown on her and he cuts her nose with a knife and then we get more 90s era metal that kicks in and then our fat leader in the hat he picks up a handheld blowtorch and heads over to kill slash melt blue jasper's girlfriend wife and you're wondering where's jasper he's just laying on the ground in the fetal position getting the shit kicked out of it. I just can't watch this. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. Do you guys see any paintings? Ow! Ow! On the walls! Oh! That you might want to purchase? Ow! I'll give you a ow, ow, good deal. That one's for a hundred... A hundred dollars! Excuse me, I've got to go catatonic. Wait, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the ceiling or the floor? Both! It's a trick I learned when I was a kid getting beat up just like this. Yeah, a trick. <laughs> then we flash forward to the hospital where he is lecturing Dr. J. But you just don't know anything about darkness, sister. It's just nonsense. We flash back to the bridge now, yeah. right? Now we're back on the bridge. <laughs> he's about to jump <laughs> off. And then M and Clear Bear roll uh, up in their limo or whatever. Hey, buddy. Hey, why are you looking so glum, chum? Thinking about killing yourself? Yes. Life can be a bummer sometimes. I get it. I get it. My girlfriend was killed right in front of me, and I can't sell a Peyton to save my life. God's a joke and a nightmare. I believe in nothing. And then oh, like the well. devil is like, hey, buddy, I hear that. Look, Jaspers, is that your name? I can help you. I can offer you a new life where nothing's going to hurt. You know, there's no good and evil. I can give you the power of vengeance if you want that that sounds great can you fix my eyes are you looking at me or are you looking at that billboard for red bear and pizza that's right all right well hey hey buddy look more over this way i'll tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna help you go get those bad guys that really put you in a tailspin here okay i just hope there's no catch there's definitely not a catch i just want to rip out that guy's heart the one who killed my girlfriend wife blue earlier and didn't buy one of my paintings clearly i'm wearing the clothes from that scene earlier in the movie so you know it all happened just a few minutes ago let me ask you something do you have any contracts i can find that maybe give me superpowers or something you know what fortunately i know a little magic It's a talent that I always have possessed. Now, Jasper, please don't laugh. I use it on behalf of the miserable and lonely and depressed, pathetic people like you that are going to kill themselves. And then this big orb flies down from the sky Uh and it turns into a contract. An after effects happens. Yes. (laughs) 
<laughs> the devil uses his long white fingernail to cut Jasper's finger, and he says, "All right, um, just sign here and here and here. Initial here. Print your name here. Emergency contact here. Print your birth month. We like to send you something special during the month of your birth. Oh, it won't be on the nice. day, but it'll be close enough just to show you that we care. And then one more signature here, and we are done." Great. So, superpower then? Look, Jasper, there's going to come a day when you're going to believe in something again. I know you don't think it now, but it's going to happen. And then when you do, well, then shit's going to go sideways. All right. But before I leave, do me a favor. Put these forearm bracelets on each of your arms. You're going to look awesome like Wolverine. If you've seen the X-Men, you're going to look like that guy. All right. That the seems pretty weird. You look great. You look fabulous. Do me a favor. I'm going to make it rain. Could you look up in the air and scream and do the Wolverine pose from X-Men? Thor, I can do that. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that ba- you you are a natural. You look badass, Jaspers. Me and Claire Bear here, we are going to bounce. Claire Bear, quit touching yourself, all right? Put your hands back in your pockets. Not, th- not that pocket. The Before side you pockets. go, I don't want to embarrass anyone, but I can see her boobies. Everyone can see her boobies. That don't say that out loud. She shows them more when she hears people see them. It's she's got problems. Oh, did someone say my boobies? <laughs> Buddy, enjoy the blades on your arms. Enjoy not being dead. Put some Neosporin on that cut on your finger. You're going to heal up great. Trust me, this is going to work out great for me. Probably bad for you, okay? Sounds great. I'm going to head to a warehouse where they're listening to terrible music. <laughs> so he goes to this warehouse, and it looks like this modern-day Dick Tracy henchman hideout. Jaspers walks in, and then he immediately just gets subdued by the black henchman of this group and then the female henchman or henchwoman she comes over and but she just takes off her shirt to expose her transparent bra essentially having her bare breast hang out as she just punches Jasper in the head left and right with a little bare knuckle chin music. Well, it had been about six and a half minutes since we saw nipples and this movie has a a quota to fill. This scene feels like a cutscene for a mid-tier level on Double Dragon or Final Fight. It could also be like a GTA 4 mission. It also has that edgelord quality about it as well. Then Jasper suddenly remembers Hey, wait a minute! I've got Wolverine blades! I could kill these thugs so he just starts skewering these people like just going to town Uh uh-huh with his his blades and kills them pretty quickly it it doesn't take long for him to slice these fools up and then heads upstairs maybe where we see Baez, the big fat dude who looks like fat mike from no fx or gross burger from (laughs) stir crazy yeah and he's hanging out and some blood drops on his nose and he kind of looks up oh and he sees jack Jasper standing over him with his claws out and on the left hand's claws are just the heads of all his victims stacked uh-huh. up like a shish kebab yeah and then Baez is like no and Jasper's like yes and then you know death we cut back to the insane asylum where Jasper's is now fully lucid and rambling about the face of evil you gotta live my life man listen with your music cures place me some Wagner there's more blood in it you're here because you went to college on daddy's money not me I'm an artist and I've got Wolverine blades something i don't mean to be rude are you talking to me because you're looking through the door of course i'm talking to you you're standing by the door and it, well, at this point in the movie, I kind of felt like we had abandoned what I assumed was going to be a cop investigation movie early on. And with him sitting rambling on about how he ended up in the booby hatch, I thought, oh, Jaspers is just going to regale us with the story of how he ended up killing all of those people at the embassy. But boy, was I wrong on all of these assumptions. Oh, if only there were structure to this movie, Chad. Case in point, <laughs> flashback to M's joint where Dr. Yamoto is there and we realize, oh shit, he's in on all of this. And he's shooting up M with the good shit. Yeah, he gives him these shots to keep M alive because apparently when the devil is in a person's body, they need a little pick-me-up juice to keep him alive or something. Right. Right.
right. And then the devil looks up and he's like, well, hey, Jaspers, I didn't expect you to be here so soon. Blood's barely dry on that contract. Hey, what's what's that in your hand? Is that a human heart? It well, sure is. You are a natural at killing people. Look, I think that now that I got all this vengeance stuff out of my system, uh-huh. I'm ready to call it a day, so. Do it. You know what, buddy? Come in here. Let's shake it out. Give me your hand. Up. Oh, hold on. I got to carve a pentagram into your palm. Ouch. That's going to make you look badass. Ladies love that, okay? And That's uh, pretty cool. You're now, you know what? Since I did that, quick caveat, you're now my slave and you're just going to walk the earth forever for me killing people. Well, ain't that a kick in the pants? Look, I'm the devil. I lie to people. It's what I do, okay? What else can I make you do to show allegiance to me? Hey, oh, hey, hey, that heart in your hand. What if you ate it? Oh, that's so gross. Who wants to see this guy eat a heart? Hey, Jaspers, eat that heart. Hey, do I'm, it. Do it. No, do I'm, it. Ah, uh, fine. I'm only doing it because that one over there said it would be fun. <laughs> Look at him. He's eating that heart. Arr, what a arr, jackass. Arr, 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 arr. So cut to a shower at M's place, I think. Oh, yeah, it's definitely at M's place because only the devil has a shower with cameras filming what's going on inside. <laughs> well, the devil and me, Chad. And Jasper's is naked, vomiting up chunks of heart. <laughs> Claire Bear slips out of the shower and is like, you know, I was wondering, would you be interested in some weird shower sex? You know what else? We could kill the devil and we could get his devil powers. But you know what? Why don't you and I... I get it on for the cameras. <laughs> and so they do. It, it's a pretty raw sex scene in this shower. Uh-huh. And that that's where we see for the first time that, like, M has this place wired up so he can see whatever's going on. M's a weirdo. We come back to the <laughs> present day, and we're in the padded room, and Dr. Jade says, So you two made love? No, we fuck. Yeah, there was no love in that relationship. That's dialogue from this movie. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Jade says, so tell me what happened at the embassy. Because that was the crime scene where the movie kicked off. I know it hasn't been referenced at all as the embassy, but it's my job to let people know that's where it was. All right. The embassy. Yeah. I had this addiction for violence that I just couldn't resist. And I should have died at that empathy. But then I conquered my demon and I disobeyed him. Oh my God, that was an act of free will. You did it. You could do it again. Let's listen to a little bit more of the Goo Goo Dolls. Or maybe Dave Matthews. I've got a little bit of, do you like Hootie and the Blowfish? Oh, you like Train? You want to listen to some Train? The siren song of Dave Matthews' band is not going to Stop my vengeance. You've got a lot to learn, little girl. The devil's gonna come for me tonight. They're gonna kill me. So Dr. Jade, she leaves and she goes and gets Jasper's file. I have no idea what could possibly be in this file. The guy just showed up. And then Dr. Yamoto, he comes in with a couple of the henchmen who were part of the crew that killed Blue, the wife girlfriend. We got the bald guy and that other guy who got electrocuted in Ghostbusters 1. And then these two hired goons, they start beating up Jaspers who is now wearing his straight jacket and then Dr. Yamoto gives Jaspers a shot to kind of chill him out. Yeah, it's a real cannonball run moment where <laughs> Yamoto is the Jack Elam of this film. Oh, you want a, want a little bump? There's just no organ music. It's just bad new metal instead. Yeah. We cut to a shallow grave where Jaspers again, still in his straight jacket is being buried alive as the devil stands atop him and is going on about how Jaspers was a disloyal slave. Also, the devil then tosses the two wrist bracelets with the wolverine blades on them into the grave with Jaspers. And the devil says, Jasper, I, I told you not to disobey me. So now I'm going to have to go kill the only person that you love, which is Dr. Jade. Wait, who is that again? He loves Dr. Jade now? Is that, is that in the script? Oh, is that the lady with all the goo-goo dolls? I love of Iris. Jasper, did you read the script, Jasper? It says you love Dr. Jade now? You just met her like 25 minutes ago or something, right? Look, am I, if the script said it, then it's gotta be true. I guess I love all right, her. All right, all right, all right. You know what? We're gonna go by the script. 
Claire Bear, Claire Bear, stop dry humping that headstone. We gotta go now. I think Thea has a problem. Anyway, get me out of this hole. You shut up down there. Hey, Claire Bear, call Mr. Vito. He's a new character to our movie. And tell him to go find this Dr. Jade and abduct her, I guess. Is that what the script says? That's what it says here. This is really taking some left turns. I'm kind of glad I'm says, getting And after that, it says, cut to two hired goons fill grave with dirt. Boys, that's you. Start filling the grave with dirt. I know you didn't expect this much hard labor when we brought you on as goon scrubs, but script is the script. You gotta do what it says, boys. I'll see you in hell, Em. Yeah, I'm sure you will. All right. See you later, buddy. And so Dr. Jade uh-huh. elsewhere calls Margulies, who is still obsessed with this geocity site just can't get off of it the timeline of this movie is incomprehensible hensible hensible hendable abdominal Abominable. 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 It's, it doesn't make any sense. Like, did, did the death of Blue and the suicide and the murder of the goons and the embassy, did all of this happen in the same night? Yeah, I think all of this takes place in the same, like, nine hours. Are they in Alaska? Like, where you have 23 (laughs) hours of darkness to accomplish this much? Yeah, one town over 30 days of night is happening. (laughs) This is just the warm city where that's not as infested by snow vampires dr jade she heads over to a johnny rockets and our new bad guy mr Vito, he's now involved in getting her abducted a couple of goons go in to follow her and she gets on the horn and she calls up margulies and he's like i'm reading all about the hand and the, the devil there's all kinds of great stuff on the internet by the way there's a whole lot of porno hey did you know there was pornography on the internet I've been scrolling through quite a bit of it, and I can't <laughs> seem to take my hand out of my pants. Anyway, you said you wanted to meet? Yes, I've got Jasper's file. Yeah, I got some files right here, Patty. The guys at the the nut hospital, they knew who he was the whole time. They did, sweetheart. Who are they? Never mind. Who are you? You're a Johnny Rockets? I'm on my way. I love hamburgers in a 1950s-style atmosphere. Let me change it to some pants that are less moist. We come back to the graveyard, where I think Jasper's goes to hell and is strangled by and possibly sexually assaulted by skeletons? Yeah, some good old-fashioned dugga 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 music plays. (laughs) One of the skeleton, I think, chokes him a little bit, which is kind of sexy. And then they maybe put his claws back on him. The puppetry is so bad, it's, it's tough to tell. Yeah. And then one of the skeleton's heads just explodes? I think he chops off its head or something. Does he? I thought it was just like, much like me watching this movie, I was like, oh, I'm just going to blow my cranium open like a scanner. We get a wide shot of the headstone above his shallow grave, and on it are the three letters, A-U-S, which I was like, is that... Like for Australia? But then if you squint really hard, there's an F at the beginning and a T to the right. And you're like, oh, it says Faust, which outside of the titles of this movie and this headstone, there is no mention of the word Faust at any other point. Yeah, I guess it's sort of Faustian bargain at work with all the contracts and whatnot. But yeah, it's ham-fisted at best. We cut back to Johnny Rockets and a couple other scrub goons. They show up to get a delicious hamburger in the 1950s style atmosphere. And they're going to abduct or kill Dr. Jade. Dr. Jade, she runs out the back to an alley where a third disposable new goon shows up. And Dr. Jade starts screaming and yelling. And then she just gets forcibly tossed in the back of a car, driven by the aforementioned Mr. Vito who was at the graveyard earlier he's the brains of this operation Bo and then Bo from out of the sky (laughs) drops the greatest cosplay of the Domino's Pizza spokesman the Noid that I've ever seen it's so god awful it is Jasper's in this like red latex outfit or rubber outfit with his spiky Wolverine claws giant floppy red horns When did this movie decide it was going to be a superhero film? Just now, Chad. Right here. He's got those little red horns. This costume is terrible. It looks like the kind of costume you see in Times Square walking around demanding $5 for a picture. Like the rubber jiggles when he stops moving. The jiggling rubber, the way that this thing just bounces around is embarrassing embarrassing think about going to your local public library when they have a special appearance by bat
Batman. And that's the quality of costume this is. It's just absolute trash. Oh, also, he has very black lipstick on, which gives his face an even weirder kind of complexion. Whenever he shows up, you get that 90s death metal, that He starts parkouring all over the place. Yeah, and now he's got a little bit of attitude where he goes, uh-oh. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> It feels like this dude is channeling all of the worst parts of Jim Carrey from the 90s. There's the mask is in there and the fire marshal bill and it's just shit. It's just terrible, Bo. It's so bad. Like he's bad already. But yeah. then when he adopts this hero persona or the anti-hero persona, the awfulness like really kicks up a notch. And like he grabs this decapitated head from one of the thugs that that he uh, has uh, separated from the rest of his body and kisses Uh. it. And then he climbs on this car and cuts open the roof. Like a tuna can. Yeah, to get at Jade, and he pulls her out. And then he just disappears. Uh Uh-huh. And then Jade is like... Wait a second, what just happened? I should get out of here. I'm going to run, I guess. And then we cut to our anti-hero, Faust, let's call him. How is he Faust? He's just super Jaspers. There's no Faust in this at all. He looks like a crawfish or something. <laughs> yeah, he looks like steam broiled man. But he's hanging on this stone gargoyle on the top of a building, all Batman-like. And he uh-huh. goes, let me ask you something. Was that too much blood or not enough? Ugh. And then he licks one of his bloody blades, which like, dude, this was in the late 90s and you're just licking blood off of a blade? No, you're not. He is constantly licking something off of something in this movie. People lick a lot of things in this. The women are always licking the guys. He's licking blades. Put your tongue in your mouth. Ugh. So Margulies, the detective, and Dr. Jade have now joined forces, and she is showing him this file which reveals his name, because before they just thought he was a John Doe, Uh and she's like, no, his name is John Jaspers. Yeah, looks like they sprung him, and then he killed the same way that he did at that embassy. Remember the gonna, embassy? You're not going to believe it. He told me that he sold his soul to the devil. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess we all have our quirks, huh, lady? Hey, wait. The devil? You know what? I was on the internet earlier tonight looking at an excessive amount of pornography. But between rounds, I decided to search for something called The Hand. It's a mysterious crime syndicate that sacrifices people to the devil. You know, sweetheart, there might be a connection. Uh, I guess. So, should I just hang out here or what? Yeah, yeah. Jaspers is probably the key to putting all these criminals away. Tell you what, I'm going to go talk to Marino. Also, we didn't create an establishing shot for this scene. It turns out we're actually in police headquarters. Really? Oh my gosh, how convenient. I know. I'll be back in a minute. They walk outside and the commissioner is there and he's like, Margulies, you're off the case. And Margulies says, listen up here, commissioner. We know the killer's name and it's Jaspers and he's working for the hand crime syndicate and the internet has a grotesque amount of pornography. But by the way, when I said the hand, you looked a little suspicious. Is that guilt sweat on your forehead, commissioner? You should probably see a doctor. You don't look well now that we're starting to connect the dots. Oh, no, that's a normal sweat. I've got to go. And then he takes off, and Uh we then cut over, flash sideways, to Uh M's mansion, Uh where one of the thugs shows back up. It's Mr. Vito, the brains of the operation. He shows up, and Claire answers the door, and most of her body is covered for now, Bo. Uh-huh. And it's here that Vito says, hey, I need to talk to the boss. That monster showed up. He appeared from the shadows. He was like this red bat-like man with razor claws. He's back, Claire. Uh, he was like a Batman. No, we can't use that. Uh, maybe a man bat also Not can't, use, can't that. use that. Um, bat-ish man? Nope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was like a Wolverine. C- Creole man? Crawfish? Craw- Crawdaddy? Could we call him Crawdaddy? Yes, I think Crawdaddy is okay. This all sounds very scary. Why don't you take off your clothes? Lie down on this table. I'll expose my breast, hike up my skirt. I will sit atop your now erect penis, and then I will slit your throat as you achieve orgasm. Chad, I contend this is the craziest scene in this movie. Because where we begin and where we end are completely 
completely off the rails. I n- mm, All right, let's just yes, go through. Yes, I agree with your premise. <laughs> However, the craziest scene in the movie is awarded that in my mind because of all of the white liquid squirting from the nipples. That right. This is what we're getting to. Mm-hmm. So after she starts fucking this dude on the table, uh-huh. she gets all horned up and cuts his throat and she comes when she c- slits his throat if you and, say so and I then the whole time M is watching through one of his pervert mirrors and gets kind of pissed off that she killed him before he had a chance to interrogate him claire bear i've told you draw this out i need at least eight minutes of footage once i edit it down it's maybe four you just you ruined it you ruined it for me claire well, bear i had something in the oven and i needed to have an yeah. orgasm all right all right so she says, you know, one of these days, boss man, someone is going to find something that you care about. Maybe this Jasper's guy. Jasper's? Mm. You know, he does have razor claws. He's talking about that. It's got to be Jasper's. Anybody else have razor claws? Wolverine has them. No, can't no, be yeah, no, can't. That is. Freddy Krueger? No. Nope. He's got razor claws. Could have, no. Nope. Um, T-1000? He had a pointy claw. He was liquid metal. This is not a liquid metal kind it's of situation. It's gotta be Jasper's. It's gotta be Jasper's. You know, it has been, oh, maybe three minutes since I had orgasm. How about I, you and uh, we get a little fun? I don't think so. You, you really think Jasper's wants to kill me? Oh, sure. Know? Yes, yes, yes. I gave him all of his powers. Why would he want to kill me? He'd be nothing without me. He'd just be a whirlwind of vengeance, you know? Like, look at you, Claire Bear. Imagine what you would be without my devilish guidance. I mean, what? That is kind of how I'm feeling right now, big guy. Hmm? Claire Bear, come here. Let me touch your clothed breast and let's see where this goes. And she (laughs) rolls her eyes back in ecstasy. And then, Bo, she pulls her top down, re-exposing her breast Uh as she moans in delight. And then he also gives her a little pat on the ass, too. And then, Bo, he uses his magical devil powers to take Claire's already ample bosom and grow them to the size of yoga balls. That's right. They are massive, like freakishly big. And it doesn't stop there because the camera pans down and then a shockingly excessive amount of thick, white, creamy liquid pours down this woman's thighs to the ground and puddles. That's right. But it doesn't stop there, Bo. Oh, no. No, no, no. You're in a Brian Yesna film. We're not done yet. She falls to all fours with her giant breasts and then her normally plump ass cheeks just start to swell up like the nutty professor. And Claire Bear just screams out, what is going on here? Echoing the thoughts of everyone watching this movie. And her hands wither like a little twig and then she just melts into this puddle of ass flesh and oversized breasts. It looks like a uh-huh. four-leaf clover of just white skin skin but chad that's not all not only is she a puddle of literal tits and ass at this point these ginormous beach ball breasts of hers are just consistently squirting milk i like how claire bear's face is sort of embedded into this mass of flesh she looks like an all cheese version of pizza the hut from space balls also there's a little bit of the movie slither of the yeah. woman who gets blown up in that with all the alien babies and whatnot there's some of that it's fucking crazy it is jaw-dropping yeah what happens in this movie yeah and i mean like this isn't the most offensive thing it's just one of the craziest things the devil says claire bear you can't betray me i'm the devil and then he blows smoke onto this mess of ooze and flesh and then claire bear just emerges like a butterfly from a cocoon and she's naked of course with her breast exposed and she's covered in slime but she's back in her normal female human form and you just sit there your jaw in your lap like what the hell did i just watch this is available on youtube for free right now (laughs) Go watch it. It's the words cannot describe what the hell happens. It costs no money, but I disagree that it's free. I think that you're paying a price watching this movie. <laughs> so we cut to Dr. Jade's apartment where she now has police protection because she was attacked in an alleyway by thugs and the crimson Batman, AKA crawfish daddy. And, <laughs> 
Detective Margulies is there to make sure she's all settled in. And he's casing her house, just sort of taking in all the details. And he grabs a photo of Dr. Jade and this older man. And Margulies says, whoa, who's this? Your husband? And Dr. Jade says, huh, husband? That's not my husband. Husbands and wives have sex with one another. That's my father. I've never had sex with him ever in my life ever. Why would you even bring up such a preposterous notion? Plus he's dead. He's dead and he can't hurt me anymore you know what let's just listen to some music how about the presidents of the united states okay go into the country gonna eat a lot of peaches daddy always calls me a sweet peach make the voices stop make them stop make them stop yeah that is real weird shame though seems like a nice guy and then he just takes <laughs> off and she takes a bath and because it's been 30 seconds this movie has a flashback <laughs> <laughs> except this time it's not the murder of uh, a poor woman uh -uh. it is instead the rape of a poor young girl yeah the camera pans over and we see a man's clothes like his pants then his shirt tie then a teddy bear and then a little girl in a bed clutching a stuffed animal and then there's a shadow that casts over her and then this wax covered monster man shows up to do unspeakable things and Bo when you introduce a storyline like this in your movie mm -hmm. This is now what your movie is about. This is now a child sexual assault story. Yes. And the enduring trauma that accompanies it. No, th you're right. Th this is what is referred to as a heavy spice for your film. And yes, it is just now a, a movie about this little girl who was sexually assaulted. Except that the movie doesn't know that. No, because they keep interjecting red Batman and Wolverine hands and the Noid or whatever the hell this is. Like, in fairness, he's about to disappear. Like, we got a couple more scenes with him, but in a minute, he'll just disappear for a while. So Yeah, until the very end. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so after she has her terror bath, then Jasper shows up naked, trying to convince Dr. Jade, listen, he's got people everywhere. You're not safe here. The devil's, he wants to kill you. And the police commissioner's working for him and Dr. Yokohama Mama and this sexy lady that I banged in a shower, they're all working for the devil and they're going to come get you, Dr. Jade. Oh, wow. You're really hitting me with a lot. Listen, do you just want to maybe put on some blues traveler and just relax for a minute the cops outside hear all this commotion in the apartment or maybe they just hear dr jade talking to someone and they start banging on the doors and screaming hey dr jade you need somebody in there to help you out and this makes jaspers kind of hulk out a little bit and his head goes halvesies on him looking like red batman it's like from the nose up he's crawfish daddy and then the cops just knock down the door which then causes jaspers to go full avoid the noid and we see some transformation CGI that is best suited for an Alka-Seltzer cold medicine commercial where Jaspers just becomes this superhero joke of a character. Would you like to hear the official movie nerd joke for this? Please. As he transforms, the camera focuses on his foot going from human to demon in uh -huh. a shot that Quentin Tarantino would be proud of. Hey oh Once he becomes the super bat noid guy, he shouts out, It's showtime! Like, <laughs> yeah. what? And he does a little more licking, too, with, with the claws. But yeah, he, he goes after one guy and cuts off his arm, and he says, Go tell your master what you saw here tonight. And then another cop tries to shoot him, but it turns out he's bulletproof. There's terrible artistic decisions in this movie as well. There are all these Dutch angles. You know, the camera's tilted to when we see Super Jasper to convey his unsettled, disoriented mindset. After he, he kills one dude and then the other dude kind of scrambles off. And this is an, another actual line from this movie where uh, Super Jasper says, I make such a mess when I play. Dr. Jade screams at him, you're murdering policemen. And then she just runs off. And he's like, they work for the devil. I'm here to protect you. And then we get this stream of dialogue with him shouting as she runs off. I'm the pornography that gets you hot. It gets you off, Chad. 
I'm the pornography that gets you off. What is going on in this movie, bro? And, you know, the writers were just like, fuck, yeah, tell that play what's up. Yeah, the pornography that gets you off. I'm pretty cool. It is the most basement dwelling incel bullshit all through this movie. But this scene in particular, the I'm the pornography that gets you off in particular is one of those that's like, ugh, God, I would never want to meet and talk to the people who wrote this movie. Back in the apartment, one of the cops who wasn't killed, he's mostly dead, but he's partially alive. He drags his body to a window and sees Dr. Jade run down into the subway. And the dying cop grabs his radio and he's like, Code Red, Code Red, you have all Michigan Avenue. I'm like, oh, Code Red, bro, that sounds real official. Yeah. And Margulies is in his patrol car and he hears this. So he turns around and heads back. And then we see Dr. Jade in a public phone booth calling margalise and she says oh my god he's here and i'm like good luck with the diseases from that phone booth this is gross like whatever's on your hand face and ear you need to see a doctor immediately all these cops show up in the subway margalise shows up there he runs downstairs into the subway but he's on the wrong side of the tracks and goes to the wrong phone booth and then dr jade she's hiding in a different phone booth and then the police commissioner shows up dr yamoto shows up and the good doctor wants to inject jade with a syringe uh, because it turns out they do work for the devil aka M and then they need Dr. Jade for something related to the finale of our movie I think yeah it's kind of unclear exactly why but there's a whole lot of get the girl yeah and Margulies gets to the subway pretty quick and sees Dr. Jade across the way but uh -huh. she can't talk or something she jumps on the subway train when it pulls up yeah as does everybody else yeah yamoto is there the commissioner is there a bunch of random cops are there and so they finally get hold of dr jade and yamoto is about to shoot her up uh -huh. but she kind of breaks free and runs away from him and then Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> yeah, in comes the boiled muscle. The crimson cape crawdaddy. New metal starts playing once more. Fetch me, Super Jasper, to save the day. Yeah, and he starts lopping some more arms off because we got a, a handful of these arm things, some prosthetics laying around. Yeah. So let's not let anything go to waste. This movie costs no. about $3, so yeah. we don't have a, a lot of money for for extra limbs you're not gonna see a leg cut off in this movie because we only paid for the arms <laughs> marino calls for jade and it's a real moment where dr jade is stuck between super jaspers and marino the commissioner yeah and he's like come with me if you want to live and jaspers is like no he's gotta kill you come with me and finally she goes for super jaspers who has cut the subway in such a way that they rocket away leaving marino the commissioner and all his men in a car drifting behind them he does like a full 360 circle and cuts through the metal and then that's how they make their escape yes we cut to the warehouse art studio where regular jaspers and now super jaspers live i hope he's paying rent <laughs> you know i am. Man. i stood in the mirror today for 30 minutes explaining to him how we're gonna split the bills and i gotta tell you i couldn't tell if he was looking at me or the wall they debate violence for about two sentences uh -huh. Faith in science and vengeance is mine. Yeah, and then they're just like, what do you say we have sex? And she's like, well, I guess you kind of saved my life, maybe? Super Jasper says to her, you can't cure me. It's not a sickness. And then Dr. Jade says to him, what do you want to do? Rape me? Is that what you want? And I was like, she said what now? That's a very specific fantasy. And I don't even know if it's a fantasy. Like if I'm, I've known you for a few days and we're chit-chatting and someone says, what do you want to do? Rape me? Is that what gets your rucks off? Like, whoa, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What just? <laughs> happen here honey i was just thinking maybe we would go to that new seafood place is that where you want to do it you want to rape me at the seafood place no whoa, no whoa, 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 no whoa. no why whoa yellow flag no. hang on Look, a second hey, no means no and i'm saying that no i don't even respect you too much it's just that it's weird but then she kind of slips and falls a little bit and super jaspers grabs her arm and saves her and then he pulls dr jade into him and says so what do you want dr jade and she says i wanted you 
ever since the first time I saw you, you know, in a straight jacket, <laughs> drooling from your mouth, swaying to and fro. Looking at me and possibly somebody behind me about 20 <laughs> degrees to my right. And then these two start to have late 90s movie sex. But then Dr. Jade hallucinates the melted plastic monster that actually raped her when she was a child. She starts screaming and yelling. And then Jasper's just holds her in her arms. Also, did I mention he's naked during all of this? Also, it, this comes back a little bit later in the movie movie when they almost have sex she says out of nowhere this is forever john and he's like whoa, 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 whoa i mean i came back from the dead and all but let's not get like commitment heavy here how about we just you know mix it up a little and see what happens the movie then cuts a little bit later and dr jade is talking about her childhood sexual assault with jasper who is still naked but he's wearing a bed sheet and he's kind of holding her and then the movie just heads back over to the devil's mansion the commissioner is there he shows up for the monthly satanic cabal meeting and he's followed by margulies who's hot on his trail and then margulies walks inside this mansion past the worst security guard ever <laughs> This dude just lets him in. Margulies is like two rooms into this mansion before he even flashes his badge and announces that he's an officer of the law. When the guy's like, hey, you can't be here. Like, they're having this meeting. It's going to be a while. And he's like, yeah, I'll uh, just wait down here, Patty. How about that? And so that's what he does. Inside, there's a meeting of the Devil's Pentaveret, which includes a hilarious cross-section of people. There's the Where's the Beef old lady. There's some Asian guy with coiffed hair. There's a black guy. There's a guy who is a little person, but wearing sunglasses backwards on his head. There's a black woman. There's a knockoff of the Dos Equis most interesting man in the world. The Devil is there. Dr. Yamoto is there. Claire Bear is is there who shockingly does not have her top off in front of all of these people yeah it's a real like cantina scene from star wars situation <laughs> here <laughs> i like when the commissioner comes in and he's like look the mayor wants to know why we haven't apprehended the man who killed everyone at the embassy what am i supposed to tell the mayor jasper's is now a superhero who has wolverine claws and he looks like the domino's pizza died what am i gonna do tell him that huh is this this is gonna disrupt the evil satanic ceremony that we've been planning for hundreds of years you know Marino, uh, I, I know you got a lot of problems here. I'll, I'll tell you what. How about, first of all, you're kind of a failure. And I know that's going to hit you hard. But let me just unbutton my shirt. And I think this will explain a lot more. The devil opens his shirt and this flesh-colored Venus flytrap pops out of his chest like a quado, eats the police commissioner in one big gomp, and he's just gone. Yeah. All the while, Margolis has made his way down into one of these, like, two-way mirror masturbatorium rooms where he can kind of see everything that's going on. He's watching all of this and is not phased one bit. Everybody watching is just like, oh, I guess this guy's serious. All right, so meeting adjourned then? All right, well, we're just going to kiss your wing ring on the way out of here so that your stomach monster doesn't eat us too. Who wrote this? Like, they filmed it. These were adults. These were people that had financial backing. They conceived this, and then they, they put it on film for other people to see. This movie is such a colossal waste of everything. Time, energy, effort, money, thought. It's just awful. Not only just the actors and the writers and Brian Yesna, the director, there are people holding lights, holding yeah. the microphones. Craft it, services? Like, yeah. Can you get a fucking load of this movie? Did you see that when the woman just kind of melted into tits? Did you see that? I mean, I'm not saying I'm going <laughs> to watch this movie, but I'm definitely going to watch this movie. I'm not going to tell anybody I worked on it, but I'll watch it. I just want to see what it looks like on film, you know? I, I see what it looks like here. It looks like garbage. <laughs> but you never know. Maybe they're going to whip a little tika tika do on it or something. I don't know. After everybody kisses the devil's ring and they leave, the devil walks over and he looks into the mirror, which has Margot on the other side of it and it's implied that he knows that he's there is that your read of this moment in the movie yeah yeah that he he sees marley's through the mirror and kind of knows what's up it would have been nice if they would have had a flash forward to see this coming to resolution then flash back to this moment so we would really know what's what going is on. time chad if not one slow fast forward <laughs> 
Well, Bo, you know, time only exists so that everything doesn't all happen at the exact same moment. Oh, boy. Wouldn't it be great if it did? I read that from the director's cut script of this movie. <laughs> That's the fate that waits for us all, Chad. You're really fucking deep, man. I know. This is like the butterfly effect level edgelord bullshit. The devil here says, you know, Dr. Jade, she was the one who started all this. You know, she planted that seed of hope inside Jasper's head with all of her hootie and the no fish and her three doors down therapy. It's all her fault. You know what? Hey, guys, if we kill Dr. Jade, then we could probably take out Jasper's. I guess. That's his plan. plan. And so back at Jasper's place, Margo Margolis is there with Dr. J. Or he calls her. He's because he's still at M's joint and he calls her. He's like, Oh, that's hey, right. Okay. Hey, I'm still at the big mansion of M, a guy yeah. you haven't met yet. Girly, I got a plan. We can kill the devil. You know what I need you to do? Come down to that big mansion on the outskirts of the movie, the one that's owned by M. And, and when you come here, come here alone. <laughs> Should I? bring jasper's no, the guy no that just been? just no. you sweet cheeks all right come alone just you make sure you're not followed and don't bring any firearms or anything that's sharp and pointy all right just you and put on a pair of mittens all right how about that cherry pop and daddy cd can i bring that sure th- I-, I like them a lot all right and if you got any big bad voodoo daddy bring that as well oh sure i've got a little bbvd i'll be there in a minute <laughs> You know, for a woman who suffered so much trauma in her life, you'd think she'd be a little more suspect when a man asks her to show up anywhere all alone. Sure enough, she does. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a movie, I guess. Dr. Jade shows up at the Devil's Mansion, and we get a shot of the Devil looking at these star charts, and he says, This is a map of the sky. God lives over here next to this planet. This is where he vacations. <laughs> This is where we meet up every now and again just to chit chat. <laughs> we cut to Dr. Yamoto and he's mixing up some chemistry and Claire Bear comes in with her breast hanging out, but there are pasties over her nipples. It's real classy, Bo. That's a word you hear a lot in relation to this movie. It's real classy. <laughs> Claire Bear says to Dr. Yamoto, why don't you and I double cross the devil and steal his devil powers? And then Dr. Yamoto says, mm, okay. What if he finds out? He won't. All right, good enough for me. We go back up to the devil's office, and Dr. Jade walks in all alone, per the request. And as she's going into the office, she sees these photos of the devil with all of his famous celebrity friends, including, Bo, a photo of the devil with Adolf Hitler. My favorite is FDR. (laughs) When I saw that one, that one really tickled me. Like, oh, yeah, nothing says the devil like the New Deal. The social safety net. Nothing more diabolical than helping the poor, Chad. Well, it depends on who you ask. (laughs) Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, from the devil's point of view, it's so dumb. (laughs) The devil comes walking in and he sees Dr. Jade and he's like, Hey, Dr. Jade, good to see you. I made a couple of apple teenies. You want one? Apple teeny. It's it's good for what ails you. You're the devil. I don't think this is a good idea. It's great. Drink one of these. By the way, Margolis, the detective, he works for me now. This was a trick. I'm the devil. I lie to people. It's what I do. (laughs) And Margolis busts in and he's like, yeah, that's right. You know why I work for the devil? Because you slept with Jaspers. The way he phrases it, I really like where she's like, I can't believe you would turn your back on me. And he's like, you're a hypocrite. Did you have a good time last night? It's pretty good. Immediately, Dr. Jade says, look, the devil, I want to make a deal with you, like a deal with the devil, if you will. I don't know if you do that or not, but I'm interested in that kind of an agreement. He's very into this. He's like, well, I guess it all depends on what you have to offer, you know? (laughs) We get some real uncomfortable discussion of Dr. Jade's sexual assault as a child. Margolis lets it be known that he is team the devil all the way. And then the movie cuts back to the warehouse art studio slash crime scene from earlier in our movie. Jaspers wakes up. Dr. Jade is gone. And he lets out a loud, Jade! He's got two of these in the movie. This is the first of the pair. And it's pretty hilarious. Jade! We cut to Dr. Yamoto giving the devil another injection of stay alive juice, but Dr. Yamoto has swapped it with double cross serum bow. Oh. Which causes the devil to start growing these bulging sores on his head that are covered in slime. They look like testicles all over his face. Yep. And then the devil, he just bites Dr. Yamoto on his head and kills him. Yeah. 
All that is right. Yeah, and the, he kind of melts too. Or Yamato, his face turns all red and beefy as well. And then with both of them dead, Claire Bear uh-huh. just rolls in in a fancy red pantsuit. She looks great. Oh, except for the fact the that her breasts are covered. Well, for now. Give it time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then she has a shotgun in tow and says, "Honey, I want a divorce." And then shoots M right in the face with his shotgun. Although you don't see that, which would have been fun. So she killed the devil Eh, or the earthly host of the devil. And so she takes a seat behind his desk and it's like, and so I am in charge now, the sexy Uh new boss. And she does this little countdown where she she goes four, three, two, one. And then some thugs rush in. It's the bald henchman that, and the guy from Ghostbusters one with the Afro, they come in. Remember they buried super Jaspers in the shallow grave. It's those two idiots. Yeah. And so she says, listen, I'm the boss now. And the bald guy is like, uh, I don't know about that. Kablamo. Right. And she just kills him with this shotgun. And the dude from Ghostbusters is like, uh, yeah, you're in charge. And she's like, that is right. Go get me the Jade Woman. I have kinky plans for her. Cut to Dr. Jade in an S&M dungeon, Bo. Yeah. Where Claire Bear is dressed as a dominatrix. Uh-huh. And she puts out a cigarette on Dr. Jade, then punches her in the face, uh-huh. then proceeds to put Dr. Jade in an old-timey stocks yep. with her head and arms strapped down. And then Claire Bear just starts whipping the shit out of Dr. Jade with a cat and nine tails, screaming about how women are victims and whores. Who wrote this? Yeah, it's going to be really good now. In this scene, she's going to put this girl in pillory. She's going to whip her in the ass and be like you're a whore or a victim one or the other but no you're gonna be both and then she says i'm gonna give you the gift of lust hang on, hang on. I'll, i'm gonna get back to writing this i mean i gotta go to crank it real quick we cut back to the devil's office where the devil himself just comes back to life Bo. apparently that shotgun blast to the face don't do nothing to him well sure he's the devil Let's go back to the sex dungeon. Claire Bear has dressed Jade up in some kind of chainmail bikini. She looks like Princess Leia from Jedi. A little bit, although that outfit was more tasteful. <laughs> yes. And is torturing her. Because she's in this kind of human-sized cage, and Claire Bear has it wired up to a car battery or something. Uh-huh. She's electrocuting her and licking the blood off of her back where she split her spine open. Well, of course. If there's blood or a wound or pus or something, somebody's going to be licking it. Claire Bear says, You will learn pleasure and pain are one, and we will get to the bottom of who it was that was raping you when you were 11 years old, because this movie can only get worse so as she's doing this God. it's like stirring jade's memory uh-huh. which involves her floating with a sexy slender man uh-huh and then once jade gets all horned up claire bear says that's right it is working pain and pleasure are fused together and then zaps her one more time and now this is where we see that the man who was assaulting jade as a child was in fact her father Oh, oh no. This movie is repulsive, Bo. It made me feel bad as a human being. It has no point. It serves no purpose other than to just like shock and confuse. Yes, it it is intended to be like shocking and transgressive and there is a fine line like i am a fan to some degree of movies that can be transgressive in a way that's genuinely interesting but just being gross is not being transgressive that's what this is right this is just gross a movie like martyrs or something is really disturbing and it's one of those movies that's tough to talk about tough to watch but there's something there. There's an artistic quality to the film. This ain't got none of that. This is when uh, them senators would say, I don't know what pornography is, but I know it when I see it. This is that. The devil walks in and he goes, hey, Claire Bear, surprised to see me. And Claire gives it a real, uh-oh, gulp. <laughs> We cut back to the suicide bridge, where for the fourth or fifth time in our movie, Jaspers is up there contemplating taking his own life. He has a flashback of Dr. Jade having sex with the devil, and then he gets this real stern, cross-eyed look on his face, and he's like, I've got to go save Dr. Jade. 
somebody's got to be the hero of this movie, and I haven't been in it for about 25 minutes. We cut to this satanic ritual that we heard so much about that had been planned for all these many centuries. And Claire Bear is now tied up to a giant X like Jonah Hex, but mm-hmm. she's naked, of course. Yeah. And she's covered in brownish gray mud uh-huh. with a pentagram drawn on her belly. Uh huh. The crowd around her is full of all the people from the boardroom earlier and a lucky few that got invites. Friends and family, yeah. The devil's up front, he's holding court, and he's like, everybody, everybody, can I get your attention, please? Right. This is the night we've dreamed of. So much planning, so many people to thank. It's the night of the red giving. We're going to bring about the beast. It's going to bring about a new day. This is a judgment-free zone, folks, all right? Let your freak flag fly. Just get weird with one another. Do the things you never thought you'd do, because it's all going to end badly for most of you, all right? Did he say it was going to end badly for most of us? Yeah, well, most of you. Definitely you, all right? Uh, Dr. Jade, why don't you get up here on the sacrificing table and uh, writhe around, kind of like Dana Barrett, waiting for Lewis Tully to show up? Uh, everybody in the crowd, just follow me. The nighttime is the right time the night time, the night time is the right time there night time is the right time there we go just like we've rehearsed people and we've got the thugs wandering around serving as kind of bouncers of this ritual which i really like jesus christ bo oh <laughs> my god <laughs> then m decides he's gonna kick it off he's like all right everybody we're gonna start with a little bit of a magic trick all right claire bear just hang tight because this is probably gonna hurt you a lot more than it hurts me and so he just reaches into her belly uh-huh And yanks out this giant python. Yep. It's this yellow and white 10 foot long snake that comes out of the middle of her belly. I hated this movie. It's... (laughs) So I fucking think terrible. that kills her. And then we see that Margulies is there and he's all covered in mud as well. And naked, Bo. And naked. He screams out, hey, boyo, I always wanted to know the truth. Now look at me. I am the truth and I'm naked. By the way, I'm a grower, not a showa. Quit giggling, ladies. All right, open wide there, Detective Margulies. This yeah. is going to hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. You might have heard me say that to Claire Bear a minute ago. And he just, I guess, kind of shoves this snake into Margulies' mouth. Yeah, the devil just force feeds him this giant snake. And while that happens, Claire Bear, for no apparent reason, just burns alive on the rack that she's on. Yeah, she's gone. And then the thugs just start stabbing fools. <laughs> While Dr. J does some sexy dancing on the altar. Everybody starts stabbing each other with daggers and they're all having orgy sex. This is the kind of shit in the 80s and 90s that drove Tipper Gore crazy. Yeah. The moral majority, these are the kind of movies that they would cite of just being like, Hollywood is out of control. And you're like, yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. Yeah, you're kind of right. This is wholly inappropriate for everyone. It serves no value whatsoever. This should be regulated. I wish you could put a sticker on YouTube. It's awful. But then metal music starts playing, which lets us know that Super Jaspers is on the way. And he busts in and just starts slicing up some of these dudes in robes. Did, did you expect Pep Strebeck and Joe Friday to step in and kind of save the day? Oh, if only. Against the, uh, what was, what was the, the organization? Pagan. The forces of pa- people against goodness and normalcy? If only, Chad. <laughs> Boy, you know, in retrospect, how good a movie is Dragnet? I mean, compared to this, like when we're talking about Faust, there are so many movies where I'm like, man, you know what was awesome? Wing Commander. If you got a choice between Dragnet and this, Dragnet every day of the week and twice on Sunday before you even consider watching this piece of shit. Yes, you should watch Dragnet 10 times consecutively. Before you even watch the trailer for this movie. (laughs) Yeah, this one time even equals 10 dragnets maybe a baker's dozen it's about time for another jade yeah. which happens here when he sees jade sexy dancing on the altar she's up there doing these like ballet moves or something he says what did they do to you jade hey jasper's baby he didn't do anything to me that i didn't want him to do and she just like pumps her hips at him implying that she's gonna have sex with the devil or maybe she did have sex with the devil yeah no you can't have sex with the devil he's the devil and then she repeats the this is forever you and me and this guy over here and this guy 
And then Super Jaspers just immediately turns into regular Jaspers again, now naked on uh-huh. his knees. And he is like extra cross eyed in this scene with a bunch of <laughs> sex orgy blood murdering in the background. And then the little person from the board meeting earlier, he's walking around as the hype man getting the crowd all into it. This sounds pretty good, but it's not. And then Jaspers just goes catatonic again with Tweety Birds. Tweet, 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 tweet. Tweet, tweet. When this happens, you just have to play Crash into me to him. It's going to be fine. <laughs> the devil goes over to the sacrifice table where he then takes off his clothes and proceeds to have sex with Dr. Jade in front of Jasper in this catatonic state with blood orgy sex murdering in the background. Bo, I felt bad for everyone associated with this production watching it. Like these are people that went to Hollywood to be actors and be in movies. And this is what they made. This wasn't Hollywood. This was in Spain. They just shipped a couple of American actors over that were willing to do it. These were people that wanted to be in movies. And this is what happened to them. But the worst is yet to come, Chad. I know, I know. We're at terminal velocity, but we've got about 5,000 feet before we crash into Earth. The most disgusting part of all of this is as M is humping Dr. Jade on the altar, Uh she screams out, Chad, Daddy, no! And it is the most weenie shrinking moment I've ever seen in a movie. That was the point where, as I was watching this, I was like, Chad's going to be so bad at me. I got to tell you, Bo, when I watch this, I'm so happy to hear you say that because I love you. And the fact that you acknowledged that you knew how angry I was at you watching this movie (laughs) just reinforces the friendship that we have. Because I did get angry at you as I watched this the first time. The second time, I was a little more forgiving for some weird reason. But yeah, I was like, what am I fucking doing man oh i know as soon as i landed on this movie there was a point where i was like this could end the show (laughs) this may be the thing that breaks the camel's back (laughs) we really haven't gotten to the worst of the worst of the worst of this movie so dr jade (laughs) screams out while she's getting raped by the devil and then a giant serpent monster that looks like a sentient turd rises up from this pit of the sacrifice blood rape orgy fest i think it's related to the snake that was force fed to margulies earlier maybe yeah we don't know the devil goes over to dr jade and they start talking more about her childhood rape trauma at the hands of her father it's all nauseating and then the devil says hey Take this dagger and go kill Jasper. That'd be a real fucking crazy thing to happen. Do me a favor. Cut off his head. That'd be super crazy. And there's a bunch of dialogue about the childhood rape that's so gross I won't repeat it. Dr. Jade walks over with the dagger. She brings it down to kill Jasper's, but instead of killing him, she cuts the binds on his wrists. And then, Bo, Jasper's immediately just turns into Super Jasper's Red Batman Noid. Uh huh. And he's fighting this homunculus creature that is uh-huh. about uh, four times his size. So he just has to yeah. hop up into the air to take swings at it, like a child trying to reach the cookie jar. Yeah. It's this big snake turd that's yeah. like. 40 feet in the air. But it also has a laser beam that it shoots out of its head. (laughs) I can't believe I'm saying these things. It shoots a devil laser out of its pentagram head. There is at least one person listening to this right now (laughs) that is thinking, I'm going to go watch this movie. Don't. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do it. You're thinking, this is nuts. I've got to see this. You don't. It's so much worse than we're describing. It, 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 please don't. Please. Do not. Do not under any circumstances watch this movie. The only reason I foisted it on Chad, if you were listening, is because I had seen it. And I didn't want to be alone. <laughs> you wanted to test our friendship. I just wanted to be able to say, like, this is as shitty as that Faust movie. And have someone be like, oh. Oh, yeah, that fucking movie. Because I, I didn't have that person in my life, Chad. You know, misery loves company, and so does shitty movies. The poop snake is whipping around. Yeah. And then... It shoots a tractor beam. 
Yeah, a blue tractor beam at uh-huh. Super Jaspers and holds on to him. But then Dr. Jade, she stabs the devil with the dagger that she has. Like you do. Which then gives Super Jaspers the opportunity to plunge his Wolverine shish kebab skewers into the pentagram that is on this snake turd's head. Yeah. <laughs> so you think that would be the finale, but no. oh, you'd be wrong, Chad. Uh huh. Because we have to be a little more gross for this sure. movie to be properly sent off to credits. So, despite the fact that he's been stabbed and the homunculus is gone after yep. Super Chaspers stabbed it in the pentagram, now <laughs> M is still alive, floating above this grate. Hey, look at me! I can float. It's a levitation spell it's uh not hard pretty pretty awe-inspiring hey dr jade i got a deal for you if you still want jasper's freedom then why don't you give me the soul of your unborn child you know the one that i just pumped into you when we were up on the sacrifice table yeah i remember that that was awful also haha devil i've pulled a fast one on you because while i'm going to sign your contract for his soul in exchange for the soul uh, uh-huh. of my firstborn child. The one that I get after you signed this. That's Go right. On. Guess what? What? I can't even have babies because of all the child rape. And you're like, what? <laughs> The way that she outsmarts the devil is to show the upside of the sexual assault she suffered as a child. The answer to that question, Chad, is yes. That's what happens at the end of this movie. Ha ha, I don't even have a uterus, thanks to all of that assault. <laughs> it's just like words fail me. It's just, I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable talking about them. <laughs> yeah, on account of all the parental rape, Chad, we've gotten one over on the devil. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jasper's just stands up naked, of course, and walks over to him and says, we're both dead, and then stabs him. Uh-huh. And then the devil burns up in some after effects again. Uh-huh. And then Jasper's just dies while flashing between the ritual room and the bridge where we have a flash side back ways. We go forward and backward and sideways and upways and downways. It's like the great glass elevator, but it goes every direction. So he just fucking dies. And Dr. Jade holds his dead body. A naked dead body. His naked dead body. And then we hear the soothing strains of death metal. And credits roll. End of all of this. I did not see this movie coming when we started this season, Bo. How could you? I didn't recommend this movie because I thought it was good. I didn't even recommend it because I thought it'd be especially funny to talk about it. <laughs> I recommend it because I was the only person I could find that had ever seen it outside the crew of the film. I needed that person. I needed somebody to talk to. I'm, what am I going to do? Tell, tell someone I love? Uh, my my girlfriend that hey you want to watch this no she would break up with me immediately (laughs) that's it that's faust love of the damned did i get the title right (laughs) i really tried to scrub it from my memory yeah well now we never have to talk about it or think about it again and we're all the better for it but yeah so yeah it's terrible no one should ever watch this movie it is an absolute pile of cinematic garbage it is distasteful on every level i mean is there anything more that we can say to insult it it's awful and we'll post a link to the youtube video on our facebook page as well as our website if you're interested in watching it please don't we're gonna give you the gun (laughs) and tell you not to use it but uh, chad uh, this is it's an exciting time because it's a season finale Yes! In series finale, potentially. (laughs) But it's time to rank our movies. Yes. Uh, from best to worst, or worst to best. I mean, Faust Love of the Damned is the worst. It, yeah, it's, it's definitely the worst. It's the worst. I'm going to go best to worst. Okay, okay. The best movie we watched this season, I hate to say it, is Justice League Snyder Cut. Oof, okay. I think it is the closest thing to a real movie with real production quality. If I just met you on the street and I, you gave me these six movies and which one you had to watch, I'd give you that one and I wouldn't be ashamed of it. Now, we're going to drop off a huge cliff to get down to everything else. There's a four-way tie. (laughs) (laughs) My number two, because of runtime, is Jonah Hex. 
You're in and out. <laughs> sure. Okay. Fair enough. My number three is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen because Sean Connery is pretty entertaining in it. And that movie is just mind-bogglingly goofy and all over the place. Uh-huh. I'm going to go Ghost Rider next because you convinced me that Nicolas Cage really cares about this role, even though I don't think it's very good. Howard the Duck is number five because of the duck tits. And then, of course, Faust, Love of the Damned is at the bottom because of all of the childhood rape and everything. Everything we've discussed <laughs> and the low production value and stupid and dialogue else. and nonsense the grunge metal scenes. and the yeah, yeah just everything about the movie is telling you not to look at it <laughs> <laughs> it's like some magnetic like reverse magnetism of film or can't look directly at this thing <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bo, let's do your ranking. All right, all right. I'm going I'm going bottom to top. And obviously Faust Love okay. of the Dam, no question about it. Sure. One of the worst things we've yeah. ever discussed ever. And I don't mean on the show. I mean you and I as people, one of the worst things yes. we've ever talked about. <laughs> Yeah, we've talked about a lot of terrible, terrible things in our friendship together, and this is really amongst the worst. <laughs> yeah, it's a big apology for me. So <laughs> that's the worst. I think after that is Howard the Duck. I think you're right. I think that's number five. I think four is Snyder Cut for me, just because okay. it's so damn long. I know. Then Jonah Hex is three. Two is uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and then the most tolerable thing for me was Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, because I do think that Nicolas Cage is just unhinged in that in a way that I can really enjoy. I can see all of that. But again, it's like Ghost Rider is kind of my number one because of Nicolas Cage. And then it's a four-way tie for who gives a shit. Yeah. And here is the dog turd on the bottom of my shoe. Oh, God, <laughs> there's a tampon in the dog turd. That's, <laughs> that's Faust Love of the Damned. Now, Bo, when people come yeah. to you and they say, the holiday season is upon us. Yes. For you, Bo, that means Halloween. Yes, it okay? does. Yes. For me, I'm thinking Christmas. And for our next season, we really wanted to find a way to blend all of this together in some sort of a mashup fashion. Yes. Which we've artfully done in our next season's theme, Christmas Time is Here, featuring six movies that are not Christmas movies. They are Christmas adjacent films, movies that take place at Christmas time, but are not in and of themselves Christmas movies movies, which allows us to introduce motion pictures that have elements of Halloween, elements of Christmas, and elements of multiple other genres that we will be touching on over the next six episodes. Pretty clever, huh? Not bad, Chad. Not bad, if I do say so ourselves. Bo, do you have a recommendation for what you would like to see as the very first episode of this holiday-themed extravaganza? Of course I do, Chad, uh, because <laughs> I wanted to redeem myself. It's not a sequel to this, is it? <laughs> no. Oh, God. <laughs> like I said in the introduction, Sony Pictures is making a series of Faust Love of the Damned. Just let that wash over you. I didn't need to hear that, but go on. So to redeem myself a bit, I wanted to do something that was a little classier. <laughs> <laughs> So, coming up first on season 18 of Pick 6 Movies. Good God. We have the return of Gary Busey. What? Yeah. In what? A holiday-themed classic called The Ginger Dead Man. And what you may have heard is gingerbread. Oh, no. Th this movie is clever enough. It's ginger dead, Chad. Does it surprise you to know that I've never heard of and or seen this movie? No. Does it surprise you that I have at least heard of this in three sequels? Do you own this movie? No. No. No one uh. does, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> is it only available on youtube no this is available on both uh amazon and uh tubi if you're nasty <laughs> <laughs> tubi <laughs> that's the sad cousin from across the way for crackle if crackle had caught on a little more <laughs> and had way more garbage on it all right i'm excited i know what is coming at least on my side over the the next six 